The power of habit is that it will help you last long. Whatever you are doing now is a seed you are sowing for the future. Prayer is one of the tools that God has given us to be intimate with Him. Tell your neighbor, I hate so far. I hate so far. It's not my fault. I hate so far. In our Sunday teachings, like God spoke to us at the beginning of the month, we teach on ideas and thoughts. Amen. Today. We're going to continue on ideas. I want to wrap it up. I want to teach on a message that title to receiving ideas. Praise the Lord. Receiving what? Receiving ideas. Amen. Amen. Praise I believe several of you know the richest man in the world. Right? Just pick any of the names. There's just You can pick anyone you know. Praise the Lord. If you do not know, um, say for example, Jeff Bezos. Amen. Um, let's just wrap it up or estimate. I'm not sure what the current figures are. Let's say he's worth $200 billion. Okay? Currently. Amen. If you are given an opportunity, okay? So choose between Jeff Bezos, okay, as he is right now, with what you know about him. To choose the man or to choose his $200 billion, what would you choose? Amen. Think properly before you answer. Amen. If you are given an opportunity to choose between the man Jeff Bezos and the $200 billion that he is worth, what would you choose? Think properly. Don't rush. Amen. Service has just begun. We have time. I don't know why some are laughing. I don't know why some are silent. But I hear some say the man. I would uh, assume that those who are not answering means their answer is not the man. <laughs> Praise God. The reason I'm asking that is because you have to realize that, um, like I began to teach at the beginning of the month, the importance of ideas. Amen. Praise God. If I have this phone for example let's just say this phone and let's say this phone is jeff bezos if i have this phone and let's say this phone that phone was jeff bezos and from that phone came an idea that made me 200 billion dollars is there any possibility that this same phone can generate another 200 billion dollars amen it's very high I say that because a lot of people many times, today I'm going to show you the sources, how to receive ideas and things and places to pay attention to for an idea. Because if you know how to focus on the source of an idea and you are trained properly, then you stand a chance of not losing those um, life-defining, destiny-defining ideas. Praise the Lord. The other time I told you ideas rule the world. I think we had a message along those lines. Praise Jesus. Let's begin. Job, the 36th chapter from the 22nd verse. Please do for me message translation. Job 36, verse 22. He says, do you have any idea how powerful God is? Praise God. Do you have any idea how powerful? Amen. And I said before you have an idea, you have to first what receive an idea. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Before you have it, you have to first what? Receive it. So today we are teaching on receiving ideas. So that you can become, you can have it. And then become rich in it. Praise God. A lot of people undermine. And I said, great men, successful people do not undermine the place and the importance of sources of ideas. This is why countries, are they will pay any price. To get you to their nation because when they know you are a person of great thinking who has ideas. This is why you have what they call skilled workers programs. This is why first world countries continue to tap the smartest brains from other places. 
This is how America, the United States of America, became what it is. This is why they give what you call green cards, diversity lotteries, and all kinds of things. They are looking for the best brains. Now they are giving what they call innovation, innovation visas just to help people relocate. They know how to tap to a light mind. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So the question is, can a man replicate the same thing? Can you watch out for idea? Can you look out for a person who you know has great ideas? Praise the Lord. Can you look for that thing that has a great idea and say, okay, I'm going to stick on this thing and develop myself? The answer is yes. So let's look at it today. Some of the sources of ideas. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Before we do that, let's look um, at Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, the the 28th chapter, amen? Deuteronomy, sorry, the 8th chapter. Deuteronomy 8, verse 18, the 18th verse. Deuteronomy 8, verse 18. Look, give me King James. I prefer King James. Okay, okay, this is good also. This is good. It says, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for what it is he that gives thee what? Amen. What does God give a man? God does not give a man wealth. Praise the Lord. If he is going to be rich tomorrow, no, think about it. We, we just spoke about the richest man in the world. God never gave him monies. What did God give him? Give him the power, the idea. Stop asking God for money. Start asking God for what? Am I speaking to somebody? One of the power God gives you, it's not some, you know, some energy you'll be feeling inside of you. No, it's words. It's an idea. And I'm going to show you some examples today. He said, it is God who gives you the power to get wealth. Now, the person may have the power and not get the wealth, but God has given it. I'm asking you to somebody. Some people are sitting on their power. Some are sitting on the talent. Some are sitting on the gift God has given them. Some are just lazy to act. Some give up too quickly. Some do not process it. Some of the greatest countries, some of the supposed to be the greatest countries in the world are not the greatest in the world. There are countries that sit on their minerals. There are countries that just, you know, they didn't even know they had such minerals with them. Praise the Lord. But yeah, God has given them the power to get the wealth. Hallelujah. So, get this straight. Why are we talking on ideas? Because God has promised to bless you. Praise the Lord. God has what? God wants Pastor Ima to be exceedingly blessed and great and rich in this life. And I don't mean a little. God wants surplus for you. He says he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond all that you can ask or think of. So here is this man now trying to just be a doctor. And God is like, that's a, a, a pharmacist, for example. God is saying, that's not even, that's just very little compared to my plans for you. So is God ready and willing? Does he have the ability? Yes. But you must know how to tap into those things that will carry you there. Praise the Lord. Uh, um, let, let me say this to you. You have... If you don't want to die frustrated as a Christian, you must learn to look at the body, at the church, at people, and see where people are missing it. The church of God is full of people and with people who are praying every day, who are making mighty confessions, who are speaking in tongues, who believe God for the best things in this life. Until there are several of them who now reach a point of frustration. They start saying in the life to come. Amen. In the life to come because they have tried so much and they are not getting it here. So you must look and learn and say what is it that we are doing wrong. And one of those things we are doing wrong is what we've been trying to emphasize the whole month. Is the fact that a lot of people are not taking advantage of the intangible blessings of God. The tangible ones come from the intangible. I'm asking you to somebody. The what? Come from the intangible. Even God himself, the Bible says the things that we now see came from the things which we are not seen. 
So much so that out of darkness, he caught forth light. Hello, somebody. So, if I am going to see the riches, the blessings, the greatness, all those things which I'm praying, if I'm going to see that husband, if I'm going to see that wife, if I'm going to see that, you know, that happiness, those children that I'm believing for that business, I have to realize that it is not going to come like that. I have to first tap to the intangible. And those intangible will come as ideas. Praise the Lord. They will come as ideas. Look at what the Bible says. It says, "Why well, we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. The greatest blessings of God are invisible. Can I, can I speak to somebody? They are invisible. That is why when, when, when you are going through life and, and as you become more and more spiritual and mature, learn to look beyond the, out, the outside. Learn to look beyond what? Learn to look beyond the outside. Learn to look beyond the physical. Learn to look beyond the palpable. Because a man can just be here right now, but what you do not realize is that God has blessed him with the power to make wealth. We have our, some of our people graduating right now. Amen. Um, if you look at them some years ago, five years, six years ago, several of them did not ever imagine that they would be the way they are right now. If you look at their before and their after, praise God. There's a clear difference. Amen. Some of them that are afraid of their pictures of first year. They'll hide it. They'll pay you any money just to not put it on their status. Amen. Because the glory of this, their latter house, is better than that of the former. Amen. But can a person, can you look now at a person and be able to sense, to discern who that person can be in a couple of years' time? So that you can make wise decisions. Can you have an idea of who they are and what they have? He said, it is God that gives the power to get well. Hallelujah. How does he do that? The first and foremost way is to give you an idea. Praise the Lord. Let's look at some examples. Praise Jesus. Second Corinthians, the first chapter, the ninth verse. We see one of the sources of ideas. Praise God. So we're looking at some of the sources of ideas now. One of the sources of ideas. Give me a uh, give me message. Message. He says, We felt like we had seen, we had been sent to death row, and it was all over for us. Amen. The first source of idea, praise the Lord, are situations. Show me situations. God can give you an idea from a situation. Hello? Sometimes that thing that you call problem, eh? God can use it to what? Speak to you. That thing that you call struggle, that thing that you call a problem, can be carrying a message. Amen. So here now, um, the Apostle Paul is giving an account of what they were experiencing. And in the moment of time, what they are going through is as if they are on death row. They are choked on every side. There is difficulty. There is darkness. There is problem. Can you give me from verse 8 so that we can get the picture of what is really happening? 8 or 7. When we see that you are just as willing to enjoy the hard times as to enjoy the good times, we know you are going to make it. No doubt about it. Do you see that now? So I, when, when people are going through problems sometimes, you know, I always, I, you know, I, I often say this and I'll, and, and I'll tell you again, maybe, maybe because folks are growing, but a lot of folks do not know how to respond when things are tough. A lot of people have very bad attitude towards tough times. I don't know why. Amen. But I'll tell you one thing for sure. There is no successful person who is not at peace with tough times. Amen. That's just part of the, it's part of the plan. We're good with this. Amen. Let it come. Amen. Today's a tough day. Tomorrow will be better. That's it. He said, when we see that you are just as willing to endure hard times as to enjoy the good times, we know you are going to make it. Are you seeing this now? So, how do we know people who may not make it? 
They have a certain attitude. When things are bad, they have a certain attitude. He says, we know you're going to make it when we see your attitude, how you approach both good and bad times. Go quickly because of time. We don't want you in the dark, friends, about how hard it was when all this came down on us in Asia province. He said, we don't want you, we don't want you in the dark. We want to tell you how things were tough for us in Asia. You see all the celebrations now. You see the gospel is moving. You see now, oh, uh, Corinth, the church in Corinth. You see this church is moving. And he says, no, let's tell you. We don't want you to be ignorant of how hard it was. It was so bad. We didn't think we were going to make it. And I encourage somebody now. You may be in a state today or in a situation where you feel like you, you, you don't know if you're going to make it. Paul is speaking to you. Hallelujah. Tell me I'll make it. I'll make Say I'll make it. I'll make it. Hallelujah. Say in the midst of this challenge, I will receive an idea. Yeah. It was so bad. We didn't think we were going to make it. So one of the sources of ideas is in that difficulty, that challenge. Ask yourself, why is all these things happening? There is always a reason. It's something God is trying to communicate to you. Hallelujah. There's what? There's something this situation is trying to tell you. Quickly, next one. We felt like we had been sent to death row, that it was all over for us. That moment when you think it's all over. He said, no. But look at it now. As it turned out, it was the best thing that could have happened. Hello, somebody. As it turned out, it played in such a way that it became the best thing that could have happened. And so in that moment of time, you may not think that all of these things are working together for good, but God is up to something. Tell me God is up to something. So I'll get an idea. Amen. Amen, I'll get an idea. Anything you are going through, there's an idea you can get from it. I always tell people, tap from it. Suck out all the Jews from that problem. Hallelujah. Yeah. He said, instead of trusting in our own strength or wits to get out of it, we were forced to trust God totally. In the midst of everything, then he reached a point. So then he realized, we were forced. Circumstances can force you to do the right thing. And he says, that was not a bad idea. Hallelujah. So it was an idea to trust God. An idea. You have to know and discern the moment when you are supposed to trust God. Hallelujah. So my situations can force me, can make me to receive an idea. There are what we call energy bars. Those who are on diet sometimes, you may know that well. Amen. Protein bars. There are different kinds of things. A lot of invention, a lot of today's... <laughs> Okay, let's take some. Fanta. Uno Fanta. A multi-billion dollar company came as an idea in the midst of the Second World War. When Coca-Cola was stopped, because the factories were in, were, were in Europe, and they couldn't make and get the formula for Coca-Cola anymore. And because the Nazis had hate for the West, for America and all the right, all the likes, you could not be associated with Coca-Cola. And so the Coca-Cola factory and owner and CEO in, in, in Europe decides we have to change style. So the remnant of one of their formulas, he decides, okay, we cannot be associated with Coca-Cola, so we have to change our name. Is this, is this the same Coca-Cola? We well, came up with an idea, so me idea. So they changed name. And started making, he says, okay, let's create something. So with the remnant of things remaining, he started making Fanta. So Fanta became what they in Europe were using. Why the war was ongoing? Why American soldiers were living on Coca-Cola? After the war, things rearranged themselves. Coca-Cola and Fanta, they kept moving. Now, ask yourself, which situation are you now which idea Listen, the reason why some people stay longer in a problem is because you have not learned what you're supposed to learn i began to speak about protein bars 
Those protein bars that everybody now eats, children love to eat, everybody eats, were actually not made for civilians. They were made at what times to support soldiers because you can't cook in the battlefield. So they give you protein bars, put in that your stuff bag. So you're going on the on battlefield with your gun. Take one. You can eat one or two a whole day. Now we consume five at, on the spot. Yeah. Amen. Without going to war. <laughs> Praise God. It was intended. Of course, some of these things were in preparation for the future. In space, for example, where you cannot cook, where particles scatter all around, all forms of food must be boxed. So they only eat in wraps, already prepared foods. So all of these things is in preparation for where we are going. And what has made several of these men who you see succeeding is the idea they pursued. Some of them from tough times. So many tough times. So it turned out to be the best thing. Amen. Are you broke? Inside that brokenness, there is an idea. Am I speaking to somebody? Hiya. Hiya. Have you been duped? Inside that duping, there's an idea. Have you made mistakes? Have you been in a relationship you regret? Inside that relationship, eh? there is an idea. Have you failed exam before? Inside that place, there is an idea. Did you, did you get, were you once big, very big? And you cut down on your weight. Inside there, there's an idea. Much of the world's greatest world trainers once used to be big. I mean, fitness trainers. They beat it. And they are making money from it. Because they suddenly realize the thing that doesn't kill you Will make you stronger. I'm asking to somebody. And what they've gone through, they can help others to come from too. Tell me there's always a good idea in everything that I go through. Hallelujah. So the first source is what situations. The second source are men. Deuteronomy 1 from verse 22 to 23. Deuteronomy 1 from verse 22. The first source are what situations. So I want to encourage you do not undermine, don't underrate, and do not underestimate the things you go through. A lot of people are quick to throw away their experiences. Hello? Hello? It is beautiful. Let me, let me say something. When, when, when you have had a bad relationship or a bad past, whatever that nature is, is inside, it is very nice to actually to move on, you know, that kind of thing. But don't move on without first learning from it. I always say this, anything you do not learn from, you're bound to repeat. It came for a reason. Am I talking to somebody? It came for a reason. And so those situations, the same way I asked you a question, Jeff Bezos and $200 billion, which would you choose? This is why, you see, successful people will tell you one thing. They do not regret any place where they've been. Because it was part of what made them who they are. Am I talking to somebody? The ups, the downs, the mistakes, the ones that you know were your fault, they all contributed because you kept learning and kept improving. It was a school consistently. You are where you are today because of where you are coming from. So do not undermine situations. It's important I say that because some people try to Sweep under the carpet their past. Especially the ones they call their horrible past. 
If you do not want to experience another horrible future, you better make sure you have learned from that past. I'm not one of those persons who would just, you know, oh, forget it. No, there was something. There's a reason it happened. Am, am I don't know somebody? There is, there is juice in that land. Hello? I'm not afraid to confront my past. I'm not stuck there, but I'm not afraid to confront it. Amen. To look at it and say, oh, yeah, this, this, this. Oh, get it right. Amen. In this one, for example, it says, and you came near unto me. Every one of you and said, we will send men before us and they shall search us out the land and bring us word again by what way we must go up and into what cities we shall come. 23. And the same pleased me well, and I took 12 men of you, one of a tribe. So, so the scenario here, let me, let me clarify it. The prophet Moses is telling the people, because a lot of people, if, if, if you do not know, if you do not know, uh, maybe you've heard it before, and if you are not familiar with this story, you will think that the whole concept of sending 12 spies into the land, okay, came from God. At least not from God directly, but actually it was men who suggested it. You know the story when he sent 12 spies to go spy the land that was flowing with milk and honey. The man of God is confirming here and he is saying, it was you who came to me. You said, let us send people. And it pleased me because I saw it was a good idea. I'm not going to know somebody. So, ideas can come from men. Ideas can what? Ideas can what? Hear this now. Do not under undermine or underestimate the importance of people around your life are you with me there are people who do not listen to anybody they don't listen to anybody some people are so stubborn and proud it's all they want that they want all they want to do is what they will do there are people you can listen to Listen to them when they are speaking. Remember, you say, it is God that gives you power to get wealth. Yes. And he's doing it through people. We saw, for example, he did it through situation. That's the first source. The second source we are looking at is through men. People can walk up to you and just tell you something. Girl, how far? This is your uncle be very nice. So have you considered taking it, doing it as a business? Say me business. Please, Joe. How much will I make? Listen, listen. People are trying to talk to you. Your stubbornness will not let you hear a word. Later, you go again to God. God, give me an idea. But God has speak, spoken through somebody now. I'm not going to somebody. Learn to listen. If not, you'll be stuck in the same place for a long time. Because you do not realize that God changes people's lives by ideas. It's an idea. What you call TikTok today was an idea. Everybody will not hear what. Oh. TikTok, in TikTok, in TikTok, in here and there. Snapchat was an idea. Telegram is an idea. Instagram is an idea. Facebook was an idea that came out of a problem. On the first social media, it was just because somebody was angry. A gay annoyed him. He decided to do something. So match the girls. Just do something. You make the code a program and just so that everybody will rate a girl and know, who, you know, that kind of thing. Downgrade, you know, before you know it. Started from a small institute. Today is global. Hello, somebody. It's an idea. Listen to people. When it's time to marry, listen to people. Hello? Are you hearing me? Listen, people will speak. Don't let stubbornness keep you where you are. And the saying pleased me what? Well. And I did what you say because it was a good idea. Amen. Go, 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 go. Back, 23. Message translation, praise the Lord. Something is missing. I'm looking at it. 
Hallelujah. Uh-huh. It says, that seemed like a good idea to me. It seemed like a good idea to me. Hallelujah. It seemed like a good idea to me. So what does that mean? He could also have known a bad idea. Hello? Praise God. Do you know it's possible for two people to be like this? Hmm? Let's say a guy and a girl. And a person can come around and say, hey, you guys, you guys fit too. Of course, you, I'm sure you have heard that a hundred times. Amen. Of course, there are bad ideas. But I'm talking about from a good, good idea perspective. But do you know it's possible for these two people to not even know it? This one now thinks this one is his enemy. This one thinks this one is this one's enemy. It's like they don't match. You have to listen. The Bible says something one day. One day. The father-in-law of Moses shows up to, jo- to his church. Allow me to say that. Or to his ministry. And he saw something that was not right. And he gave him an idea. He said, Moses, what you are doing is not good. If you continue like this, you will die. And the people that you are leading will die too. He said, do this now. Break things to smaller bits. He was giving him idea. It's time the church started placing values on these things. Amen.